first set the BPM to 98. Eric DOA songs do the thing where you sing about sad stuff over a happy beat, so we'll start with a major key. Write a progression with a bass line and add a rhythm to it. If we're gonna get theoretical about it, this progression is a very poppy 4, 1, 6, 5. To get the sad for what vibe, write a lead line, right click and set the grid to 1 16th and lock it into the scale by clicking this and this. Start writing in some ascending notes. With the bass line, it sounds like this. Cause that's instant happiness. And what's better than happy music that's actually sad? Just cause he's not Midwest or from the Midwest, doesn't mean you can't sneak in little Midwest licks. Can't forget those doodly doos. Harmonize them by using the thirds. And use that rhythm that goes like, banana, banana, banana. That looks and sounds like this. And all together. I know this part is way easier said than done, and it takes a lot of practice to come up with chords and melodies. I personally use a lot of music theory to make stuff like this work, but you can literally just use Google, look up the scales, or use FL or Ableton's scale feature and just play around with random notes. Either way you do it, it's completely valid. So don't let some Reddit Randy tell you otherwise. Wait, is this play about us however the more time you spend on sections like this and getting a riff together the easier making the entire song is gonna be because once you nail this all you gotta do is just copy and paste like this copy the main riff onto a pad for a subtle way to fill out the sound From the same riff that we wrote, you can also get your 808 bass line. Just copy the bass notes, drop them down a few octaves, and place them where they would match up with your kicks, which I'll go over in a second. Unlike Midwest or 100 Gex, Eric DOA's 808s aren't as intense. They're not as fat, but they're still awesome. You can make this in Serum by watching my how to 808 video because I don't have time to put a tutorial within a tutorial. Also layer in a wide base so that AirPod listeners don't feel left out. Don't forget the sub for the club. On a drum rack, pick a thick kick. Layer it with a stadium kick because stadium kicks are epic. I said earlier Eric DOA wasn't as intense as other hyperpop artists, but I'm not really sure what I mean about that. These snares are really tonal and punchy and... <laughs> you can find samples like this all over Splice, and I promise that it doesn't make you any worse as a producer if you're not making them from scratch. But if that kind of thing interests you, I do have a video up on my Patreon where I show you how to make snares like this. Put the kick and snare into a halftime pattern that looks like this. Put a hat sample into a sampler so you can draw out patterns like this. Add in some reverse crashes and some mood from an ambient sample. From there, take all your sounds and make sure to sidechain it to the kick and the snare. I use duck, but you can use a compressor or even automate volume manually if you want. And all together, that sounds like... So normally from here, I'd usually go into the next section, but I want to take a moment to talk about arrangement. This arrangement, if I zoom out, is completely ripped from Eric DOA's Sad For What. So if you look at where all the markers are, that's all of the different changes that happens in his song. And by studying arrangements from other songs, it's a good place to start, especially if you find yourself stuck staring at an eight bar loop like this. So I'll show you how to flip an eight bar loop into a more arranged song. If you've ever considered releasing your music independently, pay attention. Getting released on labels was great, but sometimes you want to have a full control over everything. 
being able to create an entire world around your music without any label of meddling, especially in this genre, can allow you to reach your full creative potential. This means friend of the channel and sponsor of today's video, DistroKid, makes it incredibly easy. When you release with DistroKid, you have full control over your masters, your art, along with a bunch of marketing tools, everything very way more easier. 100% of royalties go to you. And that's all for only $20 a year. But since you are so lovely to be watching this right now and looking at my lovely cat boy face, I'm gonna give you 7% off your first year. Just use the link below. Now you're all set. Go, go release your song to the world. Show everyone how awesome you and your music are. Now let's move on to the video. First off, stop working in eight bar loops. When you're making something like this, force yourself to work more in 16 bars. So make it like this long. And even if you just change like the ending a little bit, like changing a few notes like I did here, like compare this notes to these notes, cutting out some drums, like I cut out the hi-hat here, making a little fill like. It gives the beat a feeling of moving forward instead of just an endless loop which is where you're probably stuck. Now from here, we can take that same riff that we made earlier and make an intro out of it. I move that riff to a pluck synth like this. Which works great for an intro. Make that in Serum with sine waves like this. You just pick basic shapes and it's the very first one. Add a little bit of noise and then set the envelope one to the volume of the noise. Make it this shape too, because that'll make it pluck. Enable oscillator A onto the filter, switch to envelope 2, and drag it onto there so it looks like this. That gives it a bit of movement. Eric also layers a guitar here, but I don't know how to play this riff on a guitar. So I'm just going to copy paste the riff from earlier. And then what you do in the serum patch, you open it up and just click this button. You can make whatever patch you want. This is a really simple one, just a square wave. Just turn this button on, mono. This makes it so the riff only plays one note at a time. And Serum will just pick notes that'll make it harmonize. I put the bandpass filter on too to keep it a little bit tighter. And a little more clicky. End it with a vocal riser and a little fill and it transitions really smoothly into the loop that we just made. Anytime you want euphoria levels of dramatic effect in your songs, just cut out the kick and snare, but keep that hat going. And we're going to use that Insta Harmony synth, put it back in. That's gonna sound like this. That way we can repeat this section again as a verse. And because we had this breakdown right before it, it hits so much harder because we cut the drums out. Now, if you want to have a really big switch up in your song, but don't feel like writing a bunch of new stuff, you can take the notes from your bass line. I put it onto the pad sound, write it out, turn it into chords, select it all, and click this button to half time the whole thing for a big buildup. Add in some fast snares. And once again, it's another way to bring that original loop back in and make it hit really hard. So that's how you can kind of take one 16 bar loop, make a few adjustments in different sections so that it flows from beginning to end and doesn't sound like it loops endlessly. Then when you get yourself a singer, you can tie it all together or you can just be a story so far one trick like me. Now all together from the beginning, it sounds like this. I'll be watching from a distance when I 
for watching. If you like the video, I made a hyper pop playlist as well. You can watch that and includes the 808 tutorial. Feel free to like and sub if you like what I'm doing. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks again to DistroKid. Remember, you can get 7% off your first year with my VIP link below. Okay, that's all. Now go make some bangers.